Welcome to the lecture on fundamentals of MIMO wireless communication. Uh, in the previous lecture, we have discussed uh, the uh, Rayleigh uh, fading condition, which gives rise to the uh, autocorrelation function, uh, which gives a Bessel function uh, of the first kind with zeroth order. And we have also discussed what is the meaning of uh, coherence time. Uh, we have also discussed uh, the slow fading and fast fading conditions and how they would arise in uh, different operating conditions as well as for different uh, communication systems. Uh, in the last lecture, uh, we were just uh, trying to compare uh, the different situations of uh, fast and slow fading. And we have also said that uh, if there is fast fading, the signal would fluctuate faster than the channel condition uh, that would require uh, a better uh, receiver to be built or even a better transmitted signal design. Uh, at the same time, uh, we should also try to understand or have a, a fair idea about uh, what is the problem when there is slow fading. The advantage of slow fading of course, uh, we have mentioned that when there is slow fading, that means signal uh, rate is uh, faster than the rate at which uh, the channel is fluctuating or the, the signal strength is more or less constant during the symbol duration. Uh, that is one view of, of, the, of the whole thing. The other view of the thing is the channel uh, is fluctuating at a very, very slow rate. So, if I would draw uh, another channel which fluctuates at even a slower rate, a channel which would fluctuate at even a slower rate, right. So, what, uh, what I have tried to draw is uh, I have tried to draw the other side of the coin, means I could have drawn the signals going up. But what I mean to say by this particular picture is with slow fading, as the signal rate remains constant during the symbol duration, uh, on the other hand, uh, the signal actually remains quite constant uh, during the symbol duration. What does it mean? That once the signal strength falls below a certain threshold, uh, suppose I have a certain threshold of operating point. If the signal strength falls below this particular threshold, for it to come back above the threshold, uh, it takes quite a lot of time. Now, why this threshold is important? Because we would require the received signal strength we received at distance d we had calculated uh, to be greater than a certain threshold. Right? Uh, only once we are able to do this calculation, uh, means this calculation is important for uh, coverage probability. Uh, this is important for uh, bit error probability. That means, uh, pro provided uh, the level, uh, the signal covers a certain level, that means it is beyond a certain level for a certain percentage of time, uh, the error probability is good. Otherwise, if signal is below a certain threshold, uh, we would have outage. So, with slow fading conditions, once the signal goes in outage, it will remain in outage for a longer time. Whereas, in a fast fading condition, the signal fluctuates. So, it goes below the threshold as well as it comes above the threshold. So, that is the other advantage of fast fading or the other disadvantage of slow fading condition. Right. So, with this uh, quick description, uh, we would like to move ahead, uh, okay, we will we'll take this particular picture. So, when we say that the signal is fluctuating as, as shown in this particular diagram, this, uh, this particular uh, picture shows signal fluctuating. Uh, so, this is the time axis and this is let us say h of t or r tilde of t when s tilde t is equal to 1 right so that means uh, when there is continuous wave transmission <coughs> so so when we are uh, having this the signal is fluctuating and we have also seen one kind of way of describing this so when the signal fluctuates right uh, the rate of fluctuation is defined uh, the maximum rate of fluctuation we have already defined it as fm which is equal to v by c times f c. Uh, this could be plus or minus depending upon whether the vehicle is approaching the signal or it is moving away from the signal. So, if there is the tower and there is the vehicle, if it is going away, it is uh, minus f m. If it is going towards this, there is a plus f m. So, there is a span of plus minus f m uh, that is present in, in this particular situation. All other cases, uh, when there is a signal arriving at an angle theta n, we have said uh, f Doppler at a certain angle is equal to theta n. So, that lies between uh, minus theta minus f m and plus f m. So, this f d 
what we have seen in our earlier derivation gets added to f c. So, what does it mean? Uh, the signal is transmitted at carrier frequency f c, but when it is coming to the receiver, the receiver perceives it to be coming at a frequency of f c plus f d n. This f d n could be plus f m, could be minus f m or could be anything in between. So, if there is only one transmitter and there is nothing in the space, absolutely nothing and this is either moving away in the direction or going towards it there will be only one value that is plus f m or minus f m. Right? So, that means, f c that is transmitted is going to be shifted to f c plus f d n that means, f c plus f m or minus f m nothing else. So, there is only one single frequency that is also not a problematic case, because the receiver can tune to that particular frequency that means, the receiver considers f c cap as f c plus f d n which is equal to f c plus or minus f m either of it. So, in this case the receiver can tune uh, to this particular frequency and there is no problem. Whereas, when there are multiple paths because of theta what the receiver sees is multitude of frequencies. This is what we have already seen that means, the receiver is basically getting f c plus f d n it is basically getting a whole set of frequencies. So, this is one view. The other thing which we should uh, consider is when a signal is fluctuating as I was just mentioning there is a rate of fluctuation. This fluctuation is mentioned or is described over here by means of f m and what we are noting here is there is a plus f m there is a minus f m and there is a whole range of frequencies in between. What we would like to find out is what are the weights of these frequencies or what percentage of which frequency is present in the system or that means, we are trying to look at the spectrum of the fluctuation. So, if there is a fluctuation that is happening what is this frequency content of this fluctuation that is what we are interested in. Now, since this is a random process uh, we cannot take a Fourier transform and study it, because a Fourier transform would be of a particular snapshot of a signal that means, we are reading a particular section of the signal and uh, we are taking the Fourier transform of it and as time changes this particular snapshot is going to change. So, the next snapshot for the same process could be this and naturally the Fourier transform would be different. So, and in the third case the third time instant I take the series it would be different and the Fourier transform would be different. So, what is rather studied is the power spectral density. So, that means, you take the Fourier transforms or you take the spectrum of snapshots and then you look at it in an average and you find out what is the average content of signal in it. Now, that could be one way of studying it, but there is also another more effective way of studying it is uh, you take the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function. If you take the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function, uh, then also you can arrive at the power spectral density of the fluctuations, because that would give us uh, what is the content of different frequencies that are present in the fluctuations. Now, uh, for us phi h h uh, delta t is basically phi h i h i delta t plus j phi h q h i delta t where we have seen this component goes to 0 and this component remains as non zero and the result for this component is omega p by 2 j 0 2 pi f m delta t. <coughs> now, uh, in order to get the uh, Fourier transform of this, so that we get the power spectral density uh, we would be getting s indicating the power spectral density h i h i of f is equal to integral of minus infinity to infinity phi h i h i delta t is a function of delta t e to the power of minus j 2 pi f delta t d of delta t. <coughs> so, with this uh, we have to expand uh, this particular expression. Now, for phi for j 0 uh, this expression is that means, j 0 of x could be written as 1 by pi 0 to pi cos of 
x sin theta d theta or this could be replaced by a cos or you could also have 2 by pi 0 to pi by 2 cos of x sin theta d theta. This could also be 2 by pi 0 to pi by 2 cos of x cos theta d theta, because the integral between 0 to pi by 2 of sin theta and that of cos theta uh, would be the same, uh, because clearly uh, one is going from 1 to 0, the other is going from 0 to 1. So, the area under the curve uh, would not be different, they would be the same uh, in these cases. So, basically these are the different expressions uh, that we can use. So, we would write this expression as omega p by 2 minus infinity to infinity 2 by pi 0 to pi by 2 cos of 2 pi f m delta t sin theta d theta e to the power of minus j 2 pi f delta t d of delta t. So, with this expression uh, we have to carry forward so, this would lead us to omega p by 2. Of course, uh, we have to make certain uh, uh, change of variables. Uh, we will make sin theta is equal to x and that would lead to d theta equals to uh, d x by square root of 1 minus x squared. Sin theta would be cos theta d theta equals to d x and uh, d theta is d x by cos theta cos theta is root over 1 minus uh, x squared because of this and uh, the limit of the integral from 0 to pi by 2 would naturally change to 0 to 1 and uh, what we would have is minus and we would change the integrals here. So, we could write 0 to 1 2 by pi minus infinity to infinity cos of 2 pi f m delta t of x e to the power of minus j 2 pi f delta t by square root of 1 minus x squared d of delta t d x and we could continue from that point and uh, we would you could do a translation possibly that 2 pi f m delta t equals to y you, you could you could do it this way also and after uh, one more step it would lead to 0 to 2 pi. I am keeping all the uh, constants as it is, so that we can take care of them later. And instead of cos, uh, we could have e to the power of uh, j y x plus e to the power of minus j y x divided by 2 e to the power of minus y f by f m d y by 2 pi f m with this translation times d x. And uh, if we continue with this, uh, you are going to get, uh, you will have to collect these two terms. So, you will be getting e to the power of j uh, times y x minus f by f m and you will also be getting e to the power of j times y minus x minus f by f m and integrated from minus infinity to plus infinity uh, to by pi root over 1 minus x squared 1 by 4 pi f m omega p by 2 0 to 1 d y d x. Now, if you look at this integral uh, with d y and this integral with d y, you are going to get a delta function of x minus f by f m and here you are going to get a delta function of minus x minus f by f m. So, you will be getting two delta functions and denominator is this. So, your uh, end expression uh, what you will be left with is uh, omega p by 2 pi f m integral 0 to 1, 1 by root over minus x squared delta x minus f by f m plus delta minus x minus f by f m t x. So, uh, these are valid only for x equals to minus f by f m and x equals to f by f m. So, what you would conclude is this is equal to 1 by 2 pi f m 
1 by square root of 1 minus f by f m mod squared subject to the condition that f by f m uh, is less than or equal to 1 or rather mod of f is less than or equal to f m. So, uh, this is the uh, spectrum of uh, s h h of f that means, the spectrum of the baseband signal. Now, if you try to plot the particular signal over here, what we see is that when f is equal to f m or very close to f m, this value almost tends to infinity. So, if this is 0, this is f m, this is minus f m, there is very high value and when f m is equal to uh, f is equal to uh, 0, that means, uh, this is 1. So, you have some minimal value over here and all values would lie in between. So, what you would have a spectrum which looks like this that is known as the Jake spectrum and uh, we will take a look at it. So, the spectrum looks uh, has an expression of this quantity which we have uh, just derived and if you would look at uh, the uh, the pass band spectrum. So, the pass band spectrum uh, yeah, the pass band spectrum can be calculated from uh, g is basically h in our case we have actually used h we never used g. So, uh, s h h is equal to uh, this particular expression that means s h i h i of f plus j s h q h i, but now this term uh, would be 0, because uh, this is the uh, Fourier transform of the cross correlation coefficient which is 0. So, basically this is effectively giving us the entire uh, thing. So, if we would use the previous expression which you derived into this, uh, what we would get is the spectrum in the pass band. So, in the pass band the spectrum would look like this in the in the base band uh, just to remind you the base band spectrum would look like omega p by 2 pi f m square root of 1 minus f by f m mod squared mod f is less than or equal to f m that that was the criteria that was set. So, here that gets modified to f minus f c. So, that means, uh, f c was set equals to 0 you could also imagine it in that way. So, when it is the base band uh, this f c is equal to 0 whereas, it in, in pass band f c is not equal to 0 it is present in this particular expression and the spectrum uh, looks like this. Okay. So, the spectrum has spectrum looks like the shape that has been drawn over here. So, this is the famous uh, Jake spectrum this is also known as the Jake spectrum. And again I would like to remind you all this derivation is because p of theta was set equal to 1 by 2 pi. If p theta is not set equals to 1 by 2 pi the expression would look different. p theta being set equals to 1 by 2 pi means rays arriving from all directions with equal probability. So, that inherently means that there is no line of sight, there is no line of sight component present in this situation, because there is equal probability of rays arriving from all directions. That means, the strength of waves from scattered components are all equal in that case, if there was a line of sight there will be a specular component which is not present in this particular scenario. So, this is known as the famous uh, Doppler spectrum or the Jake spectrum. Uh, we call it the Doppler spectrum, because this spectrum is due to Doppler effect, due to mobility effect and hence it is known as the Doppler spectrum. And this particular shape of the spectrum is known as the Jake spectrum, which appears for uh, p theta equals to 1 by 2 pi, which is again uh, pretty famous. Uh, this is observed in reality, although we had uh, derived it analytically, this is observed in reality and there is a match uh, between observation and the derivation. And that is why this particular model is a very, very famous model and is the basis for uh, several results in the domain of wireless communications. Uh, we have another spectrum here, which is the Gauss spectrum. The Gauss spectrum is here. The corresponding autocorrelation function is here. This again, uh, this particular result is uh, taken from uh, mobile fading channels by Matthias Pazzol, and uh, these these particular graphs are there. So for the Gauss spectrum, uh, the spectrum would look like this. 
if you do the inverse Fourier transform you would get the autocorrelation function. So, when we arrived at the spectrum we did the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation function. Similarly, there is also another way of arriving at the autocorrelation function instead of the way we have done is you arrive at the power spectral density from power spectral density you take the inverse Fourier transform and you arrive at the uh, autocorrelation function. So, basically power spectral density take the inverse Fourier transform you get correlation function. You do the Fourier transform you are going to get the power spectral density. So, we have traveled this path uh, you can travel this path also, but in that case arriving at the power spectral density is uh, not very rigorous it is kind of through explanations and uh, but that is pretty satisfying and it is used in many many cases that is a little bit easier compared to the particular process that we have followed in this particular uh, method. Okay. So, we continue with this okay. so now it is important. So, instead of p theta being 1 that is whatever we have said. So, if there is a specular component and remember specular component we have discussed and we said uh, whenever p theta is uh, not equal to 1 that means, uh, we have a line of sight we are talking of line of sight one component being stronger than the other uh, k is the weight of the line of sight or the specular component. Uh, for the distribution we had talked about Ricean distribution uh, in this case uh, we will talk about uh, the uh, particular spectrum. So, uh, p theta uh, is the continuous angle of arrival of distribution of the scatter component and theta 0 is the angle of arrival of the specular component. As you can see there is a delta theta minus theta 0, delta theta minus theta 0 indicating that there is this much amount of power ratio of k there is this much amount of power coming from the theta 0 direction. Whereas, this is the weight of the power on this on the scatter components that means, there are rays coming from all directions and there is a strong specular component uh, which is having this ratio of k is to 1 with respect to all these powers. So, there is a specular component and that is coming at an angle of theta 0. Okay. So, that is what is mentioned by this particular expression. Okay. So, if that is the case uh, what you are going to get is a complicated expression the expression for uh, phi uh, g g that means phi h. So, in our case it is h and not g in our case it is h. So, wherever there is g you would treat it as h in whatever we have done. Uh, this particular section uh, matches our results uh, for this particular section matches the result uh, for the uh, for the non line of sight. This is the additional component of line of sight because of this part. Uh, similarly, I mean additionally there is this phi g i g q component which was not present earlier, uh, because remember in this case we have a mean m i and we have a mean m q which were 0 for the case of p theta equals to 1 by t 2 pi is non 0 for this particular case. And, uh, and, and uh, this is the uh, power spectral density uh, and uh, which would look in this fashion as given over here. So, this is for the Rishian case it looks more complicated and that is why Rayleigh is the case which is more easy and gives us an insight into performance of systems. So, uh, this would result in in spectrum as shown in this particular slide if you have a specular component uh, this is the Jake spectrum as you can as you can see. So, there is draw on top of it this is the Jake spectrum and whereas, the rice spectrum as because of the ration distribution there is this j spectrum on top of which there is this strong specular component right. And uh, what we also have over here is the Gauss spectrum, but as of now what is important for us is the comparison of the j spectrum and the rice spectrum. And these pictures I have uh, actually taken from uh, the book by Matthias Padzol, which is uh, on mobile feeding channels that is also a very famous book it is a very detailed book. So, if you are interested in uh, studying more about channel model effects uh, the uh, book by professor Matthias Padzol, which is on mobile radio channels is also uh, very well recommended. So, uh, what we remember is when we have the Rishian component uh, the Rishian component would mean that there is this uh, strong uh, 
frequency component and this is clearly because uh, we have this theta 0 which is giving rise to a particular frequency and uh, we have f d n is equal to f m cos theta n. In this case this is uh, theta 0. So, basically this is a very strong component a very strong component means this particular frequency is strong. So, that particular frequency being strong means uh, it is appearing on top of the jet spectrum. So, the jet spectrum is here on top of the jet spectrum uh, this is clearly visible. So, that is because of the line line of sight present or a specular component being present. Okay. Uh, so, we stop at this point and uh, what I would like to uh, tell you is we have covered uh, some of the most important things required to understand wireless communication systems. Uh, the rest of the communication systems would uh, build on these things, although we have uh, some more things to cover, but uh, whatever we have done till now is uh, I would uh, underline that they are very, very important. So, I would uh, urge you to go through these parts uh, again and again, uh, so that uh, you understand them thoroughly, uh, because this is the not very easy I would say, because it requires certain visualization. It is not that the maths and other things are very difficult, but it is uh, probably difficult to connect, because we are doing uh, some mathematics over here, whereas what is actually happening in the nature. Uh, so, uh, go through the references, uh, look at the materials which are provided, uh, go through the discussions, uh, so that your, your understanding is uh, improved. Because uh, once you understand this, uh, then only your uh, understanding of the rest of the course would be uh, meaningful. Means, we will be uh, not uh, referring to this uh, directly, uh, we will assume uh, all the things that we have mentioned over here is well understood. For instance, uh, we will assume slow fading, uh, we will assume fast fading, uh, sorry we will assume uh, flat fading. Uh, so, that would clearly ring a bell that we are talking about uh, the, the spectrum over which the signal is not fluctuating, we are talking about the time over which the, uh, the signal is not fluctuating. So, that is a very relatively easy condition, uh, but uh, it is also important you understand what happens in other cases, uh, because this lays a foundation to your journey into the domain of uh, wireless communications. Thank you.